Uh, we're going to return to uh, our final speaker, uh, Stephen Houston from Harriet Watt, who is going to be sharing uh, some information about what's happening at the university. Hello, my name is Stephen Houston. I'm a member of staff at Harriet Watt University in Mechanical Engineering, and my talk today is Excellence Through Engineering Through Student Projects. So why do we do projects? Well, projects are an excellent way of students to demonstrate their understanding of engineering principles in design, build and test type activity, individual experimental work, group activities, and also theoretical research. The accrediting bodies, such as the Institution of Mechanical Engineers, place high value on projects as it is a way of students to show key competencies, such as independent search, project management, applying engineering knowledge, working in a team or individually, and also in communication. In mechanical engineering, we run a number of key projects across the years, as do other programs within the institution. Our projects are individual projects, often referred to as the final year project. We do this design and manufacture projects. We have an integrated master's project. We also run interdisciplinary projects in year three. Other schools, such as Aegis, they run inter-campus projects in year one. But I'm going to concentrate on the first three projects in this presentation. So the individual project or final year project is supervised by a member of staff. The member of staff often recommends the project title, although students can come up with their own projects. Staff are often research active, therefore the students are working in a world-class area of research. The students produce a journal article and a presentation as a means of assessment. Often the student's work ends up in a real journal and, and is published to the international community. So I'm going to now allow two students to talk about their projects conducted last academic session. And it must be recognised that last session we couldn't do any experimental work due to COVID restrictions. Hi there, my name is Ruby Still and I am in my fifth year of mechanical engineering. Last year I undertook an individual project that spanned over two semesters as a compulsory part of accreditation for my degree. I decided to investigate a topic that I came up with titled Dot Optimization of Heat Transfer in Flat Plate Solar Collectors through Numerical Analysis and Computational Fluid Dynamic Modelling. I decided to choose my own project as it allowed me to have the freedom to direct my efforts into a topic I was specifically interested in, rather than following curriculum like other modules. This made the challenging process highly enjoyable and rewarding. With renewable energy systems at the forefront of current research, I decided to explore topics focusing on renewable technologies and methods that could be used to enhance them. My knowledge and enjoyment obtained from studying previous thermodynamic modules allowed me to do preliminary investigation into topics that combine both interests. The paper aimed to establish optimum working conditions for a flat plate collector in climates like Scotland. Operational parameters were varied to establish the optimal performance output of the system. I carried out mathematical calculations to gain provisional results, followed by CFD modelling and simulations that allowed me to verify my calculations. An example of this is shown on screen. Conclusions were drawn that using a non-toxic ethylene glycol water mixture as a heat transfer fluid resulted in higher performance output of the collector, providing superior temperatures and efficiencies. The results could be used to assist individuals who are implementing solar thermal systems and wanting to take full advantage of operational parameters they can alter. The experience of completing the project highly improved my ability to research, analyse data and given me an insight into what it would be like to conduct research in a professional working environment, with the importance of working to deadlines under pressure. Being individually responsible for the outcome of the results taught me the importance of having an open mind about the data I was gathering and not to draw conclusions too early. The project also allowed me to learn a new software, ANSYS Fluent, which I can now utilise in other areas of studies and overall ex expanded my engineering knowledge and skill set. Having full ownership of the project has been an extremely rewarding experience and given me confidence for any upcoming tasks that I will face. The next student is talking about a project which is based on computational analysis. Emily Jappy. I have recently completed my fourth year of mechanical engineering at Harriet Watt University. My individual project was a biomedical based project regarding the tracking of the pupil of the eyes using Python. The aim of the project was to test the viability of using computer programming to aid doctors in the early diagnosis of mitochondrial disease. Mitochondrial disease is a degenerative weakness in the muscles. By using Python, an algorithm was developed that could detect the pupils of the eyes and track them. Digital Library 68-point facial landmark detector was also utilised to identify the eyes from the face 
and allow the algorithm to have a small space to identify the pupils within. Multiple tests were done to ensure the algorithm could detect even the slightest of movements. Other tests were done to see what limitations the algorithm would have, for example, if the subject can wear glasses and how different light affected the results. Once the algorithm was proven to work and perform as expected, it was run over two subjects' videos, both at different stages of mitochondrial disease. Coordinates of the pupil were output from the algorithm to be able to calculate the X and Y movements of the pupil. The length of one pixel was calibrated to give an estimated distance of movement. The project was run in collaboration with Wellcome Centre Mitochondrial Research at Newcastle University, who provided the videos of the subjects using this research. Results showed that the algorithm was sensitive and accurate enough to locate and track the pupil movements of each frame of the video. The data was then plotted onto graphs, both in Cartesian and polar coordinates, to display a range of movements in both subjects. As you can see from the graphs, there is a vast difference between the early stage and later stages of mitochondrial disease. For the range of movement in both subjects, along with what is classed as a normal range of horizontal movement for a healthy eye. Even the patient with mild symptoms shows that there is limited rotation medially, while laterally they are with a normal range. Results proved the theory was correct. There were a few frames where the pupil detection lagged slightly. Further research could be done to increase the accuracy of the algorithm. Biomechanic modelling of the eye could also be looked into to work out the stresses and strains of the eye muscles and how they differ if the subject has mitochondrial disease. I had never worked with Python or programming to this level before this project. This meant that the early stages of the project were difficult, but with the help from my supervisor and Rob Lowe from Creative Impulse Limited, I quickly learned and got to grips with how Python worked which meant that when I passed every milestone, I felt a massive sense of achievement. Overall, I really enjoyed my project and I would like to enhance my knowledge with computational biomechanics by furthering this subject into a career. The next set of projects that we place high value on are design and manufacture projects. When we started these projects over 10 years ago, they were fairly unique in Scottish higher edu education. But now, most universities run something very similar. This is where you get an industrial sponsor to provide a project for students to work on for an academic year. So the challenge is to meet a real industrial or societal need. The students are questioned by the engineers of that company, therefore they realise that very quickly they have to move away from the sanitised academic environment to a real world situation. Many of the projects have been implemented in the companies. One company we're going to look at in particular is GM4X, which produces a paratracker. The paratracker is an all-terrain wheelchair, and this design has been heavily influenced by student activity over a large number of years. The company director, Gordon McGregor, rather, is very uh, impressed by the way that the students can get involved in the project and their contribution to his product. So we're now going to see the paratracker in action, and then we're going to listen to a student's experience of working on this project. Dad probably has been coming up here since 1975, I reckon, but in recent years he's not been able to get out into the hills like he used to, and so we um, thought, would it be possible to actually get him back up here on his favourite hill one more time? Well, with the help of some amazing machinery and some <laughs> wonderful kind people, um, here we are. So it's really quite a special day um, for my dad, and um, it's a very special day for me. We've spent lots of time up here together, I, in fact, learned to fly with my dad up here, so it's incredibly special to be up here with him again. Thanks to everybody. Hi, my name is Ima Duffy. I've just graduated from the BEng Mechanical Engineering course, and I'm going to discuss the Engineering Design and Manufacturing course with you. So a bit about this module. The basis of our Engineering Design and Manufacturing course was an industry-oriented project. In groups of six, we were assigned a client and a project title. This part of the synoptic course was divided into three main assessments. Firstly, a surgery session. This was an elevator style pitch that lasted around five minutes long, followed by a Q&A session. The second section was a technical report submitted at the end of semester one. This report was styled as a design for X with the main focus on background and market research, concept evaluation, 
design and engineering associated to your project, complete with a mock contract. Semester two was centered around the manufacturing and production side of engineering. The technical report was updated to include pertinent details on manufacture, prototyping, experimental studies, costing, distri distribution, as well as recommendations and future work. There was also an emphasis placed on client meetings, minutes, agendas and general attitude with marks being awarded for professionalism. My team was fortunate enough to be partnered with Gordon McGregor of GM4X, whose company centres around making the power tracker an all-terrain wheelchair. Our project was to make the transporter attachment and mounting for the power tracker onto a vehicle. Some of the key guidelines Gordon gave us for this design were to place an importance on accessibility, ease of use, locality of materials, and general simplicity of design. Some of the further significant qualities our group placed at the centre of our company were ensuring the product was lightweight, safe, affordable, unique, and that it follows certain design and manufacture standards. After narrowing down our initial six designs with the help of Gordon and our market research, we settled on the power rack shown. The power rack is a transportation method specifically designed for the all-terrain power tracker wheelchairs 3 and 4. This product will allow any average size car to carry either power tracker without the need of dismantling their front wheel. The tools required are minimum as the bolts used are winged, making it easier for the customers to tighten them without the need of heavy tools. The design consists of two main components, the mounting part and the actual rack. The mounting part will fit a 50 mil tow bar and is easily installed by inserting the casing into the tow ball and adjusting the bolts. The wheelchair is then placed on top of the rack and secured with stud rings and nylon ratchet webbings. Personally, I thoroughly enjoyed this module. It took us from the design phase right through material selection, the manufacturing process, assembly, storage, and finally distribution to the customer. It was exciting to be only limited by our own innovation and the guidance set out by Gordon, our client, and was definitely made special by completing this project for such an amazing company who changes lives every day. The insight it has given us to working as an engineer in the real world is unparalleled in the four years of my degree. Working with other people, delegating tasks, talking with a client and making the most of meetings in addition to more technical skills like report writing, process analysis and introducing project management approaches were only some of the skills put into place throughout this module. Overall, I think it was a really important module, accumulating all the skills I've learned in design and manufacture over the years, as well as incorporating aspects from many other modules. The last project I'm going to talk about is an integrated master's project, and it runs over two academic sessions, years four and five. And basically what we do is we give the students a very complex problem set by the academic staff. And so these are non-standard problems. We give the students a brief specification and the students are given free range to come up with their own solutions. Often we have a number of groups working on the same specification and it's interesting to see the different results from the different groups. So essentially this is a design, build and test type experiment and the students work collectively over the year and a half to produce an artifact and then they test it. Often the students do not come up with a solution that works to the specification due to time constraints, because often these specifications are the types of specifications you would find something like a, a large company working on. But the students find a lot of um, inspiration from their activities and they also learn a lot from producing a solution that may not meet the brief. They learn a lot from failure. So I'm going to show you a clip from a project from 10 years ago. Although it's 10 years ago, this was quite groundbreaking at its time. And if you look on YouTube, you'll find the entire video. You'll also see um, that lots of solutions have been built around this initial concept. <laughs> The students also build racing cars. In their spare time as part of Formula Student, they build, design, test and race racing cars in national competitions. So hopefully this 
presentation has given you an insight into the types of projects that students do and to demonstrate some of the activities they get up to and some of the quality work they produce. Thank you very much. Well, thank you uh, so much for that overview. It's, it's great to end this session with a focus on the work of students. Uh, there's a couple of uh, really nice comments uh, in the chat. Um, the uh, uh, Pat Corbett just asked, uh, does the, the, the unit you showed at the end, uh, is going downstairs for that unit as easy as going up? I, actually, I'd, I'd have to check the YouTube video probably. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure that the brief was actually to go up and downstairs. This, this one was actually the student's own uh, challenge. It was the robotics students and they came up with that. But I agree, there are, there are certain challenges that make it more difficult. But yeah, it's a good question. Yes, yes, I, I must admit I've, I've seen that myself in small children. Uh, I, I'm interested in, in the kind of feedback you hear from employers. Once your students go out and, and start working, I would imagine that projects like what you described here, it's clear from the students' uh, reports that uh, they feel much better prepared mm -hmm. professionally. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in what you hear from employers uh, about uh, their views of of these projects and the students' level of preparation if they feel it changes it. Yeah. Well, one of the things, obviously, when students go for a job is that they have to pass certain tests and obviously interviews, but actually having something to talk about, such as a project where they've been able to demonstrate working as a team to solve a complex problem, sort of shifts the discussion in their favour rather than the, the company asking them, awkward questions they can they can demonstrate and they can talk about examples where they have overcome a problem they've worked with uh, uh, academic staff or other students uh, to come up with a, a, a solution so um, certainly the projects are very important when it comes to uh, to students getting jobs yeah, and, great most, thing. and most of the delegates will probably remember when they if they did a, a, a degree their, their final year projects that was a key thing a key thing that they will probably remember they'll remember that more than than a lecture probably they'll remember their project we hear that from our students too uh -huh. 